Welcome everyone to the new Fly Fisher. I'm your host, Bill Spicer. On today's show, we're talking about equipment, in specific, long two-handed rods. Joining me today is Mike Verhoof. He's one of Ontario's top guides, and he's gonna show us how to use a switch rod and a two-handed spay rod. It need not be intimidating. It's gonna be a great show, so you're gonna to wanna to stay with us. has been made possible thanks to Orvis Ontario yours to discover Islander precision fly reels on today's show we're in the little town of Ben Miller in Huron County Ontario and we're visiting with Mike Verhoof of Fly Fitters Guide Service Mike is going to take the mystery out of long rods and show us how easy it is to use one of these two-handed instruments I then take what Mike has shown me and put it to use on some steelhead in the Great Lakes tributaries. Two-handed rods are not just for salmon anymore. They're now being used for many other species of fish. Listen as Mike Verhoof talks about the two-handed rods. So now I have uh, three rods in my hand here. I basically like to uh, show you and describe each one and how we're going to uh, basically show you how to cast with, with all the rods. First we have a good old standard 10 foot uh, single hand 7 weight rod that you would use for steelhead for example. Next would be uh, the 11 foot switch rod that we talked about a little earlier and uh, the benefits of casting it and then basically after that migrating up to a 12 and a half foot 12 foot 6 uh, basically spay rod or two-handed rod. So right now we just walked into the river here with a switch rod uh, there's a pool downstream from us, about a third of the way across the river. The first key thing I've done is actually posi position myself in a position that I can cast out on that 45 degree angle and swing the fly through the pool. I've also, a key part is position myself fairly far upstream that I'm going to start my presentation through the top end of the pool and then I'm going to work my way down very precisely to keep running or keep swinging that fly through the whole entire pool. Uh, the key thing about it is starting your positioning and then doing the proper cast accordingly to have that fly land nice and downstream. You can see there with the line and the angle that I casted that I put it out on that 45 or actually up a little bit to allow that fly to basically dangle or swing through the pool. So we just got done doing that last on the water demonstration with the uh, switch rod on the presentation on the angle and uh, I sent a few casts out across the pool and second cast this uh, little silver uh, shaker I call them basically it's two three pounder smacked my uh, fly as we was going across we missed most of the fight here but you can just see this little guy here big little feeder that's come in to chow on all the salmon eggs fresh 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 fish Basically a blue back, we like to call them. Nice steelhead for the future. Wild native fish to the river. No fin clipped on that. Nice straight tall fin on the back. Just take that hook out of her. Gandhi. So we'll see if we can catch its big brother. The use of a long two-handed rod can reap some serious bonuses. The first is you can reach fish that are much farther away when swinging flies. Casts of 100 feet or more are common. Also when dead drifting a nymph, they allow you to keep the fly in the strike zone longer, thus allowing you to cover much more water. Now I've got myself a nice fall steelhead here.
and it's give me a good fight. As you can see, these are softer action rods. And he's running towards me. <laughs> I got a two fly set up here and I'm not quite sure which fly it hit. Oh, fly popped out. Well, we got we got ourselves a small small steelhead here. I'll pull them out of the my flies hooked up in the basket in the, in my in my net here, but they're not bad. These uh, these rods make even the small ones like this look like big fish. And away he goes. Now I'm hooked up in my my net here, but very good. Don't be intimidated by two-handed rods. They're not that hard to handle. Watch as Mike Verhoof shows us how easy it is to cast one of these. So now I have a switch rod in my hand, basically 11 foot 7 weight. I'm going to show you that same uh, basically double, double spay cast uh, using the switch rod. And I'll be shooting another 15 to 20 feet of line out than I did before with the single hand rod. And you'll see how easy that actually is done with this rod. Very little effort. Boom. And we're out and fishing on that 45 degree swing. So now with the switch rod, I'm going to demonstrate a circle C cast, bringing the line from a downstream dangle up into position to basically fire it out on that 45 degree angle. Fish on. Wow. Just changed over flies. Phil got a fish across from me. I decided to take a, a cast, and sure enough, this is a good one. Yep, I know he took the bottom fly this time, which is a white egg. Norm pointed out earlier that when a fish egg is in the water, it turns almost a white. So I, that's what I thought I'd do. I'd try to almost match the hatch. But these two-handed rods which this is 11 and a half foot spay rod, which I guess they're called switch rods now. They can double up. I can use a two-handed or I can use a one-handed. Very versatile. I, I, I really like it for nymphing, but also if I get into a situation where I have to cast a long distance, I can do it. This is a good fish. There we go, come on. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Now this is a soft action rod, so I can use quite light tippet with it. That's the nice thing about these rods. It acts like a shock absorber. It's just bouncing up and down. Every time the fish flips, moves its tail, it bounces up and down. So your, your chances of breaking your tippet are less. Hey, he's putting up a good tussle here. We've had just a little bit of rain, which probably warmed up the water just that much, and, and, the, and it's turned the fish on. It's been a tough day up until the, today. Right now, it's, it's, it's been so cold. Okay. Now, I hate to put my back to the camera, but I have to. Okay, Norm, get ready, ready, ready. Oops. Very good, Norm. Thank you very much. Yeah. Man, very fine fall steelhead. Very nice. And I just heard Phil say fish on. So we'll release this and we'll get over to Phil. Away he goes. <laughs> Doesn't take him long. Keep it running. Now nah, that's the way to go. Mike's home waters is the Maitland River in southwestern Ontario. The river is 150 kilometers in length and empties into Lake Huron in the town of Godridge. The area boasts incredible accommodations, picturesque towns, and friendly people. These waters are large and perfect for two-handed rods. Listen as Mike and Bill show you how with simple timing you can control two long rods in one boat. 
Now when you have two people in a drift boat like this with long rods, there's a certain uh, way that you must cast in unison in order for you not to hook up with each other. Now Mike in his case, he's going to do what's called a circle C, put the anchor above him and then he can cast over. And then when Mike's doing that cast, I strip in a bit and I'm going to do what's called a single spay. It's a change of direction cast. And all I'm going to do is when he starts his cast, he does that, I bring mine back, change of direction, over top and away we go. The, the, the whole point here is to cast in unison. You just can't cast any time you want, you'll end up tangling up together. Again, watch as Mike does his cast, I'll, I'll get ready for mine, I strip in a bit, back behind me, do a single spay, Mike does a circle C, and it works. He has to move his anchor back here, I move mine back here. Nicely done, Bill, nicely done. This, this one, this one's gonna give me battle. So again, Bill, I've noticed you've been working a seam here. This seems to be a, a bit of a ledge. Yes, it's, it's like a little point here. You can do the same as you would on a lake, look for little points. There's a ledge that, that goes out. I can tell every time I went by it, I get a hit. So I figured they got their nose right behind the ledge here. There's a point, and we'll get a, we'll get a shot of the point there in a minute. Yeah, that, that makes sense, Bill. We got a little bit of high water here. That's going to push them out to the sides. And of course, angler pressure, which is Absolutely. one of the things that. And that becomes the, the finesse part where you have pressure and other anglers around. You got to try to outfox them. Yeah, well, steelhead are going to, you know, they get tired of being pressure, molested kind of yeah. thing. So they're going to move. Yeah, this, is a, this is a fresh, fresh fish. Run. Yeah, they see the silver. Well, oh, this could be interesting now. It's a bit soft here. These river, you gotta be careful when you're at these river mouths because this gravel is constantly wet and it can be a bit like quicksand at times. So be careful, make sure you've got good footing here. The surf might actually work to our favor and push the fish back in as well. So keep your rod tip over to the left there, Bill. I should be able to get them. Hard to see him in all this. Want to see his head? Uh, I got him. <laughs> well done, my friend. Well done. Use the use the surf to swim him in the final. Absolutely yes. And that fly, I believe, has come out and is lying right here. One of the best all-round steelhead flies is the egg-sucking leech. It can be swung in the current or dead drifted. Here's a tying recipe for this fly. The hook is a Mustad R74-9672 in sizes 2 through 10. The thread is black 8-aught or 6-aught. The tail is strung marabou, purple or black mixed with a few strands of pearlescent super flash. The rib is fine wire. The body black or purple chenille or crystal chenille. Hackle, black or purple saddle hackles. The head is hot orange, pink or chartreuse chenille. Vary the body and head colors to match the water conditions. Again, it looks like Bill's used a, whoop, a subtle fly here. Oh. <laughs> Try not to chase it. There we go. Well done, Bill. And there you go. Perfect example. Here's a very subtle fly. Small, neutral color, right in the jaws of the fish. You know, a lot of times anglers go after steelhead with big flies, big bold flies. A lot of times, especially in pressure situations, low water, clear water, lots of anglers. Small is often better. And there we have it. Gorgeous, fresh fish. Look at the color of this fish. Absolutely this fish is probably two, three hours ago was swimming around Lake Erie. Now it's working its way up to spawn in the spring of next year. Gorgeous fish. We'll just move that stick out of the way. Let him 
go. Wonderful. <laughs>now I'd like to give you an on-water demonstration of basically swinging a fly with a single hand rod. Uh, there's a lot of interest these days in moving up to a switch rod or moving into a spay rod, but some people seem to be intimidated by the whole concept of doing a spay cast. One thing I want to show you today is how you could start actually fishing that way by basically swinging and presenting a fly with a single hand rod. Traditionally when you cast out a single hand rod you will pick that line up and basically do a bunch of false casts before you present that fly downstream on that 45 degree angle to get that swing. One thing I want to show you is basically a simple uh, spay cast that can help reposition that line and allow you to do an overhead cast with a lot less movement than doing uh, the traditional overhand uh, shooting line out. Basically it's just a matter of doing a, bringing it around doing a, basically called a double spay and now we're back into the same position with my single hand rod on the swing. You'll notice how easy I did that. And we're on a swing, which is far easier than if you watched before. Me stripping that line in to a point where I'm comfortable to pick that up and then do a bunch of false casts overhead before I present that fly downstream. Here I'm only casting about 30 feet, but as you'll notice a little later when I go to a switch rod, how easy it will be to cast 40 or 50 feet with a switch rod. There again, a simple cast. The other one you could use if you're using a single hand rod and the wind was coming actually upriver and we wanted to position our anchor on the other side of us would be a simple C, come around with a big overhand roll and there again we position the fly to do a proper swing coming through. So basically I'm doing the concept of spay fishing or two-handed fishing with a single hand rod. Originally designed to cast on rivers where high banks prevent back casts, the two-handed rod has been redesigned to perform in many different angling situations. From surf casting for stripers, to Pacific salmon, to Great Lakes steelheading, and to even big water trout fishing, the two-handed rod is now being used. See how Bill's got side pressure, but that forgiving tip, any sort of sudden head throb, that rod is able to absorb it. So not only great for light tippets, but also during the battle as well. This really helps defeat the fish quickly and efficiently, so we don't exhaust it. And this fish can get back on the back onto its journey and make us some more of these magnificent fish. This fish could head downstream. We've got, Bill's going to try and steer it out of the current. But we may not win that battle, although it's starting to tire. I think we might be one more. <laughs> there you go. And again, the value of these wooden nets, they float soft cotton for release. This water is so cold, you just can't go reaching in and try to tail these fish. It's not going to work. You don't have good grip. You're probably going to break them off and lose them. Let's take the net out of the equation if we can. Get that fly out of his face. You're killing me. <laughs> Let him go. All right. Big sissy. I can't hold this any longer. Where he goes. Oh, that's sissy. This one's got a little color to him. Been in the river a little while. No, but he's still a gorgeous fish. He's got your black woolly worm right in the... Oh, won't do that again. Yeah, that's okay. Got to be cautious here. Don't want to chase him with the net. I'm going to let that fish get tired. And this one seems to be... <laughs> there we go. Beautifully done, Barry. What a nice fish. Right in the top of the jaw, right where he's supposed to be. Let's 
just get right into the yep. there he goes oh, now it's in the now that's all right. We're out. Cool. I'll let you get release. Okay. Yeah, I do. Great idea. Nice soft cotton glove. A little cool, a little damp, but that's what you what you need. One of the smaller ones. Some really big brutes in here today as well. And again, just the value of this finesse technique for steelhead. Small flies. Floating line, two fly setup. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> we'll do that again. Yeah, I just want to do them this way. There you go. And there's the value, folks at home, the value of this finesse method. A floating line, strike indicator, two fly setup, clinch knot, or improved clinch knot to the bend so they fish in tandem. Tends to foul less. Gorgeous little rainbow. Barry Acton has been our cameraman at the new fly fisher from the beginning. He has decided now to expand his camera work to China for the next three years. We at the new fly fisher wish Barry all the best in his new adventure and look forward to his safe return. Good luck, friend. You'll be missed. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's show and are not intimidated by swinging flies with two handed rods. Contact the Federation of Fly Fishers for a qualified instructor in your area. For more information on this show and others in our series, visit us on the web at thenewflyfisher.com. From all of us here at the New Fly Fisher, thanks for joining us. Tight lines and we'll see you next time. The New Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to Orvis. Ontario, yours to discover. Islander Precision Fly Reels.